I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. In the name of God, most beneficent, most merciful, all praise be to Allah. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon Muhammad and his holy household. And may Allah's infinite continuous curses be upon their enemies. Islam exists upon the message of Muhammad and forever lies upon the sacrifice of Hussein. This summarized statement can be understood from the various narrations as well as from the holy pilgrimage text, the Ziyarah. This exact phrase is not found in the narrations explicitly but it can be understood, extracted from the various narrations uttered by the infallible Imams. Hence, Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, was the medium for Islam, its essence and beginning. And it became existent among us. Allah, glorified be He, brought forth this world, creation, intellect, pleasures, Satan into existence. He brought them all into existence in order to examine and test them. And this world is wherein all are examined, all are tested. And He placed a path, a means for every existence in order for them to be examined. For example, for example, we see a group of people during the beginning of the message of Islam using Islam as a title, yet inside of them was hypocrisy. Allah, glorified be He, has spoken of these individuals a multitude of times in the whole Qur'an. Even though these individuals were considered from amongst the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy family, whom today they are called Sahaba, the companions. The Qur'an made mention of them a multitude of times, and especially in Surah Al-Munafiqoon, the chapter titled The Hypocrites. Allah has said, they are the enemies, so be wary of them. Allah has waged war against them. This type of description revolves around three words organized in such a way. They are strong words and they point to those whom are not pleased with Allah. And they point to them being distant from Allah's mercy, meaning cursed. And there is no verse that is parallel to this one in terms of its context. They are the enemies. Enemy comes before the warning. The context is very explicit and precise. He said, they are the enemies. A very precise and eloquent structure which shows evidence of closure upon the subject. He then said, be wary of them. Allah has waged war against them. Allah has waged war against them, meaning death has befallen them. This is the way the Qur'an speaks, its articulation. In this matter, the Qur'an, Allah spoke about them. Henceforth, from this we can say that such individuals will be followed as a parable later on, as an example later on. And we have witnessed them after the death of the <coughs> Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, coming forth and changing the path of Islam, altering it as they see wish. And the Quran has spoken about them. And the Quran has spoken about them, saying, and most of them do not think. This command is always like this and is found in every era. These individuals use the title, the name of Islam, and they come forward with something more blasphemous than blasphemy itself. They did not just introduce blasphemy alone, but they went even lower than that. And I say, in my speech herein, what I speak about today is not presented to the Muslim population only. No. 
but I send this message to the entire world, to the Muslims and non-Muslims alike. I say to the intellectuals, the thinkers, and the scholars of the various religions and all of us, pay close attention to what I say and read the books of history. The disbelievers, like the likes of Numrud, Pharaoh, Shadad, and others like them, have been mentioned in some stories found in the Holy Quran, as well as in the historical reports, as well as the polytheists of Mecca, during the time of the yeah. prophets, peace be upon him and his family. The likes of Abu Sufyan, Abu Jahl, and others of the same category that resided in Mecca. Or they were originally Meccans by origin. These individuals fall under the first and second category of disbelievers and politics. Each and every single one of them oppressed. <coughs> But if we are to pay close attention to the oppression that they cause and place them by the disbelievers of Mecca, then you won't find any weight to one side and equality in terms of oppression. One will be heavier, the half of those who ruled in the name of Islam. Like that of Bani Umayyah and Banu Abbas who were more aggressive oppressors and tyrants. And it has never been reported to us that the likes of Namrud and the polytheists of Mecca stained their hands with the blood of 30,000 like what Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan had done. In a short period of time, hence, if we paid close attention to the oppression of all the disbelievers versus the oppression of those small few, we notice one side is heavier than the other on the way. Half whom ruled under the veil of Islam and under the title of Caliphate of the Apostle of Allah. And each of them used to call himself the Caliph of the Muslims. Hence, these individuals what they did, what they ruled with is much more worse than the disbelievers themselves. And they are much further away from the realm of Islam than the disbelievers. Furthermore, I need not to speak about this in more detail, since amongst us are scholars, reciters, intellectuals, publishers and teachers that are well aware of these specifics. Also, those who listen to my words know about these specifics. To one of the non-Shia scholars who is well known has said, if we are to come on the day of judgment and with us every nation and the followers of all religions all come together and each bring those that oppress them, every nation, every religion brings forth a man who oppressed another man from amongst them. Or they bring forth a group of oppressors, or will bring one of these oppressors like Al Hajjaj. Al Hajjaj alone, on the weights, is more heavier than all the rest. On top of that, Al Hajjaj's title was leader of the Muslims and was also considered a caliph of the Umayyad dynasty. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, who came before Al Hajjaj, used to pray. Fast, and his image in front of the public was that of a Muslim. Moreover, the likes of Harun al-Abbasi and al-Ma'moon or al-Mutawakkil, all of these individuals ruled in the name of Islam. All of these individuals ruled in the name of Islam. Hence, my speech today is directed to everyone. And the message is, we must strive together to rid the world of evil and guide all towards the path of righteousness. The oppression and evil that has befallen the people eras ago continues till today. Even the countries that have <coughs> some type of freedom aren't immune from oppression and evil. Hence, it's incumbent upon us to pay close attention and research in order to discover what are our duties. What do we need to do for the future in order to remove oppression and evil? Or at the least, reduce them. Hence, we ask Allah, the wise, to aid us in this matter. 
بالغه خودش for when the awaited savior arrives these problems will be solved و صلوات الله علیه را تعجیل بفرماد که دیگه اینا حل همش But till now we do not know when the Savior will arrive. Hence we have to pay close attention to history, research it and transcribe it. Till this day, millions of Muslims from the non-Shia school of thought take the words of someone like Khalid ibn al-Walid or al-Mutawakkil al-Abbasi or Harun al-Abbasi in terms of their jurisprudential science, or when they want to conclude an issue in Islamic law or in their various books. This religion of Islam, whose existence was established by the Prophet peace be upon him and his family. What happened to the religion after him? From the rulers, the rulers produced more disbelief than what was apparent before. The actions of these rulers were much higher in magnitude than those before them. More threats and damage upon the religion. Since these people use the name of Islam in order to make lawful the pure blood of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. The blood of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, is equivalent. No, in fact, it is more valuable than all of Allah's creation. از خون کل بشر با ارزش تر پیش خدای تبارک و تعالی because we have read يعني in the report a title of his that being the exceptionally unique الموتور. one الوتر الموتور at times sometimes may possess different meanings either pointing towards uniqueness or greatness hence Imam al-Sadiq peace be upon him has said concerning the coming of the Imam he will avenge his grandfather Hussein peace be upon him the Imam says as well if he were to kill all those on earth it would not be a waste meaning if the inhabitants of the earth all had their blood spilled it would not equate the blood of Imam al-Hussein the literary context used the words no, meaning if or what if, and in this context it points to the greatness of the Imam. In Allah's divine wisdom, He has decreed that Islam be purified in the long run. In order that humanity in the long run comprehend this matter, then after the Prophet, peace be upon him, is death, what surfaced is completely opposite of what Islam is. Even though the name of Islam was in fact used and the name of the Caliphate of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family as well, it was all an act put forward in the name of Islam. Furthermore, this research into history will bring Bring forth the true colors of these individuals so that everyone is made aware of these truths. And it is for that reason that Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, did what he did by giving his pure blood for the sake of Islam. This blood that is more greater and grand than all those who inhabit this earth. اونم با اون وضع فجیع اون جور شهادت امام حسین علیه الصلاة والسلام We also read in the reports that the soul of Imam Hussein peace be upon him upon leaving his body and departing toward his creator the angels began to shake because of what they saw mourn and lament and they will continue to be in this state until the day of judgment moreover the angels were not stricken with any sickness this feeling that they felt had overwhelmed them a feeling that we cannot describe 
شروع We can say that amongst the inhabitants of the heavens, what happens on Ashura was something grand. This pure blood was shed so that we can say today, there is no God but Allah. So we can pray, so we can have knowledge of these truths, so we know the falsehood and hypocrisy that entered in the religion of Islam. So we know manners, humility, ethics, morality, doctrine so we know how to practice them all know the islamic laws and how to apply them this is not just for us muslims but for all all those whom the prophet peace be upon him and his family preached to and they are all of humans O oh people i am the messenger of allah sent forth by allah to you all تا من و شما اخلاق اسلام را تصمیم بگیریم خورده خورده عمل کنیم meaning that this message is projected towards all of humanity today and that this message was for them all and this and from this we can say that the imam's blood was for all of humanity and his sacrifice must be made aware to all because imam al-Husayn peace be upon him uncovered the falsehood and corruption that was hidden during that period of time when his pure blood was shed so that Islam may reach all of humanity yes whoever wishes to believe let them do so and whoever wishes not to let them disbelieve every one of you and each caretaker is responsible for the group they supervise which is why this message today is for everyone everyone should strive in this matter and make awareness of Imam Al-Husayn and his sacrifice in order to differentiate between truth and falsehood our job though is more important since our capability is much wider even though this obligation lies upon the shoulders of every intellectual being or upon everyone who is capable of acting this obligation اما مها اهل علم مها حوزوی ها وظیفه من بیشتره چون در این زمینه قدرت من بیشتره و همچنین فرهیختگان دیگه فرهنگی های دیگه اونا وظیفه شون سنگین تره بیشتره اگنه وظیفه مال همه است واجبه بر همه است in order that we uncover the true Islam, the Islam of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Islam, and his family, Islam, the Islam of Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, and not Islam, Islam, Amir al the Islam of Ali, Hassan, and Hussein, and not Islam, the Islam, Islam of Muawiyah and Yazid, the Islam of Al-Kadhim, and the Rida, not Islam, the Islam, Islam of Banu Umayyah, Harun, and Al-Ma'moon, the Islam, Islam of Al-Hadi, and Al-Askari, not Islam, the Islam, Islam of al mutawakkil It is important that these truths be revealed. Who were the ones who altered the true Islam, who played with this religion as their own? So we may know who altered the Islamic message, who falsified its true essence and came to the fact that these individuals caused more damage than the disbelievers, as we previously made mention of. Hence, it is incumbent upon all to reveal these truths, transcribe them into written works, in various languages and means, not just towards the Arabs and the Persians. Islam must reach all quarters of the world. This is the introduction. This introduction which focuses on the following statement by Hussein, this religion is eternal. Hence, 
from this point onwards, we want to bring to the attention of the brothers some of the examples brought forth by the Messenger of Allah. Peace be upon him and his family, and by the innocent blood spilled, the blood of Hussein, peace be upon him. <coughs> ببینید جنگ حنین که پیغمبر صلی الله that those who departed with the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and his family in order to defend Islam here I want to add as well that a Shaykh al Balaghi, may Allah have mercy on his soul, in his two books, Al Rihlat al Madrasiyya and Al Huda ila Deen al Mustafa, has recorded the following conquest of Hunayn in explicit detail. And it is great if these books were to be translated in every language so it could reach all 7 billion people on earth. So everyone will have an understanding of the revolutionary thoughts of the holy household, peace be upon them. Even if these ideologies can be spread via the satellite channel and everyone is to perform based on their understanding of the matter or his decree in the matter. In these books, Shaykh al Balaghi revealed every single conquest of the Messenger of Allah and his holy family. He states that all of his wars and conquests were defensive. He also showed the reason for the employment of the strategy by referring to the books of history, narrations, and autobiography. He showed how the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not want war, and this is amongst the facts that we believe in. But when others read the books of history, such as when Muawiyah sent his goon of them Busr ibn Artat, who in the time period of less than a week had killed 30,000 people, amongst them innocent women, men, and children. Furthermore, it has been reported as well that he slaughtered them, cutting off their heads. When this world reads such instances in history about Muawiyah doing what he did towards these people who don't even possess the capability of defending himself, I ask you, is this Islam? This is what Banu Umayyah had introduced in order to ruin and destroy the image of Islam. Another example, Al-Hajjaj, he wanted to capture Adiyah because he wouldn't conform to him. One man only, and you can find this report found in Safinat al-Bihar. Take a look at it. Al-Hajjaj never lifted his eyes from Aqiyah and kept on following him everywhere. Since Aqiyah had fled from him, the reports indicate that for several years Al-Hajjaj did not lift his eye upon monitoring Aqiyah and during this period his family had no news of him nor did he have news of his family. Until Al-Hajjaj found him in one of the districts of Shiraz how did he find him? How many spies did he have? He ended up torturing him. This was what Banu Umayyah contributed to history, to Islam, which is why it is seen as important, but an obligation upon us to know the Islam of Al Hussein, peace be upon him. The blood of Hussein. That was spilled on Karbala is why Islam lives till today. He is the essence. Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him, was not killed so that Banu al Abbas can rule or the likes of Harun or al Ma'moon. No. Islam of Ali, peace be upon him, during his period in government. This time period must be carefully analyzed and read in order that we comprehend and understand the true Islam. Now, let us go back to what we were speaking about before, the conquest of Hunayn.
It was one of the difficult battles, and as it has been reported, that the Muslims were 8,000, yet they all ran away. These so-called people who are called companions of the Prophet, the majority ran away and none were left by the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, except Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, and a small group defending the Prophet of Islam. In Hunayn, the command from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the courage from Ali played the role of victory. And the Muslims won and received many bounties from the battle. The Prophet, peace be upon him, stood in battle to defend Islam and so did Hussein on the lands of Karbala. For the message of Islam, if it was not for Hussein, would have been slaughtered and gone. The Prophet, peace be upon him, stood in battle to defend Islam and so did Hussein. These are the truths that we have to reveal to the world so they understand the true Islam. Islam of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family and the whole household, peace be upon them. The Islam of Hussein, in which he, peace be upon him, sacrificed his blood for. In Hunayn, after the Muslims were deemed victorious by the courageous Ali, peace be upon him, and after they received their bounties, the Prophet stood by a camel, grabbed the hair from the camel, placed it between his fingers and said, O oh Muslims, if I am to take more than my given rights, more than this strand of hair, then I have become an oppressor. Even though he was the commander and the prophet, the one who is closer to the hearts of the believers than themselves, this is the beauty of Islam. This is the truth of Islam. The truth that spilled the blood of Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. This is the Islam of the Prophet and his family and the true commander of truth, the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. The Prophet says, I will not take more than this piece of strand when receiving my rights and if I do, I have a curse. During this event, we noticed that some of the companions of the Prophet began to secretly return what they took. And anything extra that they took which was not in their right. And in this, anything that they took that was extra which was not in their right. And this occurred after the statement of the Prophet of Islam. Islam be upon him. They became embarrassed Islam and humility struck them. So they returned what was not theirs to begin with. This is true Islam. The Islam that Al Hussein peace be upon him defended. The Islam that is called the eternal Islam of Al Hussein. Hence, it is from our obligations that we introduce this Islam, the eternal Islam of Al Hussein. The blood of Al Hussein, peace be upon him, is the reason that these ideals still survive till today. And this Islam should be made apparent to all. The Husseini message of truth is to be delivered to the entire world in order that all believe and if they begin to understand these truths, loads of people will become believers. If they believe our statements, why do I say this? It is because some have increased and continue to ascribe lies upon the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his family. These people falsified and used Islam in order to corrupt it from the inside. The rulers falsified narrations, introduced new innovations and laws, which is why we have a lot of people today that tend not to believe us. But it is still incumbent upon us to reveal and make apparent these truths. There is something interesting that I want to make mention of here, is that 
one of the main newspapers in Iran in one of the years that passed under one of its main headlines they wrote 4,000 lies and when you read what falls under this title you will discover you will discover that one of those responsible and of course they did mention his name they said concerning this man that till today he has uttered 4,000 lies Hence we see that the human who sees such lies cannot believe no more. But we still need to make apparent to everyone the Islam of Imam al Hussein peace be upon him, the eternal Islam. These truths must be revealed. The blood that he spilled was for the sake of the entire world, so that all may witness the truth of Islam, the eternal Husseini Islam. There is in fact another example from the conquest of Hunayn, and in fact, the entire event of Hunayn contains several examples and hundreds of examples if we are to truly pay close attention to it. They are all examples that should be made apparent to the world. Examples that this world has not come across. Scenarios they haven't read. I say, and my words are projected to everyone, to the Jews, Christians, idol worshippers, and all other religions. I say to them, come and take a look at history yourselves. Research. Do you see anyone other than the Prophet Ali or Hussein that utter these truths? Can you discover these truths anywhere else other than the Holy Household? In Hunayn, in the battle where so many ran away, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, held that strand of hair and testified that if he gets more than this amount, then he has oppressed the people. There is another example in the same battle. The Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, was dividing the bounties. And this has been recorded in the books of history. That those who left their homes against the Prophet on the day of Hunayn were 24,000. This large number departed for the sole purpose to battle the Prophet, battle Islam. But Islam was victorious by the hands of Ali, peace be upon him by his courageous actions that took place in battle and by those small few that did not run away from battle. When the bounties were gathered, the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, divided them and he did not take anything from them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, divided them and he did not take anything for himself. No cow, no goat, no bounty at all. This is the commander that should be a parable and example to us all. This is where I want to comment concerning the situation. One of the soldiers who fled from the battle came. He was one of the hypocrites and when he saw the bounties of war being divided, he waited in line, and after the bounties were divided, he uttered a very weird statement towards the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. Something that I don't have the guts nor the heart to utter, a very degrading, a very degrading and derogatory comment that he said in front of the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy family. The words were so horrible that some of the companions of the Prophet upon hearing it could not handle it. Hence they said, O Messenger of Allah, shall we kill him? They got up with the intention of killing him. Now pay close attention to what the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family said. If you were to review history and see what this man uttered, you would begin to weep over how oppressed the Prophet was. In this religion of Islam, this man would have been killed based on the Islamic law. Since he insulted the Prophet, 
If we look at the etiquette and law of battle, we will discover that the judgment is death, even in the laws found today in Western countries. But when the companions rose with the intention to kill, the Prophet was an example for us all, an example of morality and ethics, one whom all should refer back to in order to fix themselves and have such perfect examples. These should be revealed to the people so that they will be made aware of the Muhammadian truth, know his morals and his ethics. It is incumbent upon us to give all that we have tire ourselves so that we may reach these truths. So we are not considered amongst those who do not give enough. So we have our say on the day of judgment when we are asked about our deeds and actions. These morals and ethics are that of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. And they should be facts that move us. These morals and ethics are that of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and they should be facts that move us. And we should work together with these teachings of the Prophet. And we should work together with these teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family pardoned the man that insulted him and said, did you see how I divided the bounties and did not take anything from it? The Prophet could have killed this man or at least could have replied to him with an equal statement. But instead, he pardoned him and replied to him with kindness and denied his companions from killing him. He didn't kill him nor did he take him captive or torture him or whip him. These are the morals of a true commander, the morals of the Messenger of Allah. I wonder... Did the Prophet, <coughs> peace be upon him and his family, give <coughs> anything to the commander of the faithful? Because the commander of the faithful, and we read in Najjul Balagha that he says that every time he would mention the Prophet, he would speak about his actions and he would say he would not give us anything while knowing our houses are empty. Why? Humility? Hence, I cannot Amir say that the Prophet gave this hypocrite who insulted him the sh same share as Ali because in various in different Imam wars and conquests he would not give Imam Ali, peace be upon him, anything. He would share with another over him because of the wisdom he has in him, in his daughter Fatima and in his sons from the holy progeny of Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Actions like this have no equivalent to it in history. These are facts that we need to make apparent. Those who listen to me now or in the near future from various religions or those students in the university. Or those students in the universities, the intellectuals, the thinkers, the Islamic institutions. It is incumbent upon us to give Hussein peace be upon him his rights by spreading this message and not letting the sacrifice be in vain. We have to spread these truths and make them apparent, propagate the true Islam, the eternal Islam of Hussein. Because the blood of the <coughs> Imam is precious and priceless, so we must make this message apparent in order to get the <coughs> true Islam to all. So that this message does not die <coughs> and continues <coughs> on this title, <coughs> the eternal <coughs> Islam of Hussein. <coughs> this is the Messenger of Allah, <coughs> peace be upon him and his family. And this is his government and the government <coughs> of the commander of the faithful, <coughs> in which he ruled in for five years. Those today that read the statistics of the oil, gold, silver and other natural resources will discover that this world is drowning in wealth 
and money in this era. Still, even after all this wealth, every day groups of people die of hunger. The statistics mention this. So much people die daily because of hunger. And how do we prevent these disasters? Islam is your answer. The judgment of the Prophet and the commander of the faithful, peace be upon him. Then, no one from amongst the Muslims nor anyone in this world would die of hunger in the government of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. These are the books of history in front of you. Refer back to them to discover these facts. Even the ones who wrote the books of history, whom are enemies of Islam and the prophets, did not write that anyone died of hunger during these golden periods. And they wrote that Aba Dar al-Ghifari died of hunger during the time of Uthman. But during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, or the time of the commander of the faithful Ali, this never happened. How come today people are dying in such large numbers when such wealth is abundant and when humanitarian organizations are available? Animal rights, why this oppression? Why do these wars occur between <coughs> Islamic countries? Is this what Islam is? Is Islam waging war against each other? Since the time of, the time of Abdul Nasser, I have been made aware of these issues and I know them very well. From the year 1952, 1372 after Hijrah, I have been made aware of these issues now for over 60 years and I understand them very well. Till today, I see the various countries and its rulers, and most of them I see revolutions taking place and wars. The West uses our country like a board game, and these wars and transgressions continue to occur in our countries and not in theirs. If these issues occurred in one of the Islamic countries and in one of these countries, this has occurred. I don't want to mention this country's name. 50 years ago or 10 years ago, a country faced nine revolutions, an Islamic country. Nine different revolutions, and this country isn't big in size compared to others. How many were killed? taken captive, injured, how many widows and orphans resulted in these revolutions? What happened to them? Whereas we see the West in comfort and safety, whereas the Islamic countries, you have the opposite. An Islam like this, with rulers like this, wars like this, only causes damage to the image of Islam and to the Muslims. This oppression has caused many to leave Islam itself because they have painted a picture of what they think Islam to be. These Islamic governments should be governing with justice since that is the teachings of the Prophet upon him and his family. This Islam, which is the eternal Islam of Hussein, is the Islam that the people are not aware of. It is important for us to research this message of Hussein, peace be upon him. Islam has now been established since 1400 years ago. If we take the 15 years that the Prophet <coughs> and his family governed and then the five years of the commander of the faithful, then all we have is 1380 years where in true freedom and justice has been established. How many books? How were the books printed? How were they distributed? Today we possess a great means in terms of distribution, meaning there is no excuse here 
And Allah will say to us, with all these resources, and we still have yet to contribute. In the reports we read, Allah possesses the proof upon His creation. Allah also says in the Quran, Allah possesses the conclusive proof upon His creation. Now most of the governments today have freedom. Because more than 240 countries today practice a form of freedom. Hence, our speech today is directed towards these people. And you know very well that the Quran when speaking says, O people and not O Muslims. In the sermon of Ghadir, we read that the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, says, O people, O people. His sermon was not directed towards us only. And we also see this in the sayings of the Imams as well. Even though countries such as Iraq and Iran are considered to be the center of Shiism, but this does not mean that we limit Shiism in this area. It also doesn't mean that we must bring peace to Iraq first. For example, we fix up Iraq, Iran, and every other country and city. It is important for this movement to begin in everywhere in, in order that we spread awareness of the Prophet's teachings and Imam Hussein's sacrifice. It has been reported in Kitab al-Kafi by Shaykh al-Kulayni on the authority of Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, that he said, in the city of Medina lies 1,000 hypocrites. This doesn't mean that the Prophet gave more attention to al Madina and left other cities without attention. On top of all this, the Prophet wrote letters to the Romans, Persians, Abyssinians, and he used to send messengers to various cities. And he used to send messengers to various cities and people would come to him from various locations. He did not only take care of the inhabitants of Medina, even though there were several hypocrites in the city. He did not compel anyone to follow his commands and instructions. He did not possess such negative characteristics. As Allah says, there is no compulsion in religion. The Prophet is the manifestation of this holy verse. Even though the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, did pay attention to the inhabitants of Medina and the various surrounding cities, this means if we are able to manifest these teachings, we would be able to hold on to the true Islam, the eternal Islam of Hussein. Most of the countries have some sort of freedom today. More than 80% of countries today practice various different versions of freedom. And because of this, they have the capability to hold on to the true Islam, the eternal Islam. In the previous year, and I think I made mention of this, that someone informed me that we have more than 11,000 satellites. And today, someone informed me that we have more than 12,000 satellites. And I say today, how many Shia do we have? At least 10% of the population, meaning if the satellites today are 12,000, it would mean that the Shia would have at least 1,200 satellite channels. How come we don't have this number of satellite channels today? Where is the problem so we can introduce the solution? If we have no money, we should take loans. Use our role models as examples in this matter. Our Imams, our leaders, used to take loans when an issue would arise that needed money. Issues that were intertwined with Islam and the Muslims. If it wasn't possible, like during the time of Sheikh Al-Mufid, for example, then in this time period it has become simple. At the time of Sayyid Bahr al-Uloom, they used to print books in India even though there was apparent danger or danger in shipping the books with couriers. Yet, it was still done. Since satellite channels require money, they require loans and require hard work in order to be successful. 12,000 satellites propagate the wrong message today and we are the ones on the true path. Hence, 
It is incumbent upon us to deliver to the world the oppression of the holy household. The oppression that they face. Deliver the Islam of Al Hussein, peace be upon him, and make apparent and spread awareness on the sacrifice of Imam Al Hussein, peace be upon him. This pure blood, pure, precious blood that is worth more than this world and what is on it. Islam became existent because of Muhammad and eternal because of Hussein. It is important to state that most non-profit work that has been done, most services were performed by the poor themselves. Look at the Prophet, peace be upon him. Allah says you were brought forth poor and he had sustained you. He had wealth from Lady Khadija, peace be upon her. She had given him wealth and he used this money in Mecca and in Medina. The Prophet, it has been reported that the Prophet did not have anything to eat. He didn't even have a single date to eat at night. He would tie a rock on his stomach in order that he feels that his stomach is full. Even though he did not have a date to eat, he still worked hard to contribute. Most of the institutions today were established by those who had no money. It has been narrated that as Sayyid Abu al-Hasan al-Asfahani, may Allah have mercy on his soul, had several projects in Iraq, Iran, India and various other countries, building mosques, schools, religious institutions and centers and other. All of this he did without possessing wealth. He was so poor that he used to live in one of the rooms of the Grand Mosque of Al Kufa with his family. He had no business whatsoever. Yet he established all of these institutions and schools and mosques. Another example, a Sayyid Al Burujardi, may Allah have mercy on his soul, built, or they say, he rehabilitated 400 mosques in Bahrain only while he had no land for himself, nor wealth, nor any business. But he used to make use of his status amongst the people, take loans and provide these services to the Islamic nation. He was so poor that his poverty reached a point when the doctor ordered him to eat meat in order that his body have energy to move. Even then, he would say, I don't possess the means to eat such food. We are the followers of the holy household of Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy family. We should pay close attention and read the autobiographies of the imams, of the jurists, of the scholars. It is important to state that most of them, only upon death, it was known that they were taking care of several families. They bought houses for several people and not for themselves. In one incident, it has been narrated that Sayyid Abu Hassan al asfahani had bought 500 houses for the poor to live in. One of the dear believers has narrated to me the following story. He says that I went to go see the Sayyid Abu Hassan al Asfahani, and the Sayyid asked me, Do you have a house? I answered, No. The Sayyid then took a pouch with money in it. He gave it to me and told me, Go buy a house. As Sayyid Abu al-Hasan al-Asfahani, may Allah have mercy on his soul, till the last moments of his life he lived in a rented house and he never owned a house. Furthermore, Sheikh Muhammad Taqi al-Shirazi, the commander of the 1920 revolution in Iraq, used to live in a rented house. Also, Al Sheikh Abdul Karim Al Ha'ari, may Allah have mercy on his soul, the founder of the Islamic seminary in Iran, also lived in a rented residence. Even though he lived himself, even though he lived in a, in a rented residence himself, he founded the Grand Islamic seminary, the houses in Iran. One of his students said to me personally, one day, I saw the sheikh very confused, sad and depressed. So I asked him why he said there was no one that will give me a loan, and that is because of all the loans he had taken from people. 
قدرتمند بودن فعال بودن که الان تو وجب به وجب دنیا کشورهای غیر اسلامی هستن فعالیت دارن نشاط دارن او شیعیوت even if you have no money take loans so that the world does not beat us in this matter and we turn last in the race before the satellites reach 25,000 we should distribute the ideology of Imam al-Hussein peace be upon him so that this Islam will continue eternally and forever the eternal Islam of Hussein so, so that the world becomes aware of this message and we see that a lot have been moved by him till today for you see today in this world various Islamic institutions in the West in the name of Al Hussein these centers that were never there in previous years the Shia were not so strong like they are today in the previous night a believer informed me that he was at a place where a group of people that were poor gathered a small amount of money then took a loan and bought a land in order to build an Islamic center on it. Hence, we see that the poor are the ones who move the fastest. So I say, O oh youth, we need more than 1,200 satellites so we can make clear to the entire world how precious the blood of Hussein is. So everyone can know Islam from him. We should do this in various languages because Islam exists because of Muhammad and is eternal because of Hussein. Do not let the banner of Islam fall from our hands. So we are not counted amongst those who did not contribute and be amongst those who lost in the world and the hereafter. We seek refuge in Allah from this matter. We should raise the banner of Islam as high as possible, especially in the month of Muharram and the coming months of Muharram. We should work hard to spread awareness and make these matters aware to all. Spread the message of the Prophet, the true message of Islam, this message that survived because of the spilling of blood on the day of Ashura. That is all that we have for you today. I send my greetings and my peace upon Muhammad and his holy household. Peace be upon you.